It was written in the uh, 1800s, I believe. Um, but it's talking about being humble and uh, humbling yourself, giving up your life and dying to self and all these things that we struggle with so much, particularly with dying to self, which is the only way to know Christ. And I believe many Christians, including myself, go for a walk where you're, you're trying to die to self. You actually in your heart want to be a follower of Christ. You want to do the right things. You want to be a good man or a good woman. And you want to do these things not out of law and out of um, I've got to do it because that's the right thing to do, but out of a love for God. And we've been birthed in us, inside us, to love the Lord when we come to Christ, when we've been baptised and we've given our lives to Christ and we're sincere. Remember all these things are not of word, they're of deed. All the things in the Bible are of deed, what you do. God says in many passages in the Bible about if you keep my commandments. Many people love words in the Bible that state certain things but forget to read the few sentences before. And with this in mind, I've come across in Philippians. Now, if we look in Philippians, um, if we go to, let's get it into the right bit. Right, at the end of 1, Philippians 1, it talks about having conflict and suffering, but also to suffer for his sake. And Paul's talking about suffering things coming against him, struggles and being locked up in prison and things like that. And he's saying, but he wants to be like Christ, to to live in his sufferings. He says this a lot in lots of letters. Sounds a strange concept. Then in two he goes on to say, if there be any consolation in Christ or any encouragement, if any consolation or comfort, comfort of love... If any fellowship of the Spirit talks about all these things about being in Christ, and then look what he says. Fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like minded. So Paul's saying, be like Christ in these passages, and Paul, be like him. Consider yourself low of no reputation this is what christ did then in to in philippians 2 4 it says look not every man on his own things but every man also on the things of others so don't look at things about yourself but look to just live for other people this is this is like a doormat mentality it's like you're the lowest of low then again in five it says let this mind be in you so what mind is Paul talking about? He's saying, let this mind be in you. What is this mind? The mind of Christ. And then it says, who being in the form of God, fought it not robbery to be equal with God. So this is talking about, like, say, a rich man who owns most of the world and he has every blessing and everything he could ever need and he goes to live in the worst township in the world, goes to live in the poorest run-down ghetto, but, but not only does he go and live there, he don't do it for like a documentary for a week, he does it for his life and he doesn't see it wrong. He doesn't see that it's beggary, he doesn't see that, well, that, why would I do that? He doesn't see it beneath him and below him. But made himself of no reputation and took upon the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being formed in the likeness or the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on the cross. So Christ became, he was created and made to be like us. Think about this. If you're struggling with the Lord, if you're having problems, if you feel you're not there, think about these things deeply. I'm begging you to. You must read scripture like this and really ponder it. Think about this. If God is really real, and he sent his son, Jesus Christ, who is God. If, if you believe these things, he sent him into this world as a lower form of man, as a servant, as a person of a mean life, of constant sorrows, of worries, of manual labour, of poor neighbourhood, 
of no reputation. Think about this. Why did he do that? Because it was the key for him to do the Father's will. If you've got all things sorted out and you know where you're going and what you're doing in life and you're planning where to study and what to do, that's not of God. You, When you need God, that's when he needs you. That's when he comes into your life in a need. He came for people in need. He didn't come to people that had got it. In Luke, it says he sent away the, the people that are full and he's fed the people that are hungry with good things he sent them away does that sound loving but that's what god said he sent them away because they he can't do anything for them they've already got their life sorted out so bear this in mind then so being formed in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient to death even death on the cross and then god lifted christ up into sitting at the right hand in heaven and the way to know Christ, the way to be filled with his spirit, the way to walk in God's love is to humble yourself and be obedient even to the cross, even to death. That's what it's saying. That's what Christ did. That's what we're to do. We, we, we may not die like that. We may not have to go through that. But in our hearts, that's what we do. We yield ourselves to him, which means it doesn't mean going around saying, I love God, I'll do anything he says. It means do it indeed. It means live your life like that. Lay down stuff. Pick up Christ and live only for him. Don't live only for him for an afternoon. Don't live only for him in a worship time or a study time or a prayer time. Do it every day. Lay stuff down, all them things that you want to do, that you've got in your heart. Lay that down and then God will lift you up. Look, if we carry on reading, then we get to some of the most famous passages, look. In 12, it says, wherefore, now wherefore is like therefore, it's meaning look at the previous section. That's what I've just read to you about Christ dying, about Christ being a servant. So wherefore, so therefore you, my beloved, as you have always obeyed. So he's talking to the Philippians because they're obeying him. This is not a church full of sort of so many people that couldn't care less, that only some are listening. These, this letter is to people that have obeyed. Look, ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. So they're still listening when he's away. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. How are you working it out? By humbling yourself, by being obedient, by listening and doing what you know he wants you to do. By dying to self. When you humble yourself, when you become the lesser person in a church, don't look to be in the spotlight. Don't look to have all the glory. Jesus Christ came from heaven. He came from heaven. He's God in heaven. He came to earth. He came to the much lesser place. He, he left all of the glory behind. So why would we as Christians want to go forward and look for glory for ourselves? To, to to walk in all them things. No, that's what it's saying. Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so you've always listened to what we're saying, what we're talking about. So now humble yourself like Christ. That's why he did it, to show you that's how you should live. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God that worketh in you both the will and to do of good pleasure. Do all things without mumbling or disputing. So again, he's saying, don't do it out of anger or, or, oh, I've got to do this. Do it without complaining. But sacrifice yourself for Christ. Give yourself for the Lamb. Give your heart to the Lord. Indeed, when you humble yourself, that's when God can come into your life. That's how it works. Through you humbling yourself, God can then lift you up. He's not going to lift up you if you've got everything right and you know what you're doing and you've studied everything and you've got it all sorted out in your head. You're not going down a path. Your life in Christ is not to become better, not to get better, i.e. I started off struggling and now I'm getting better, 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 better. It's to get deeper, deeper, deeper in Christ. And the way you do that is by humbling yourself, putting yourself as a servant for him and for your brethren. Don't forget that in the Bible it talks about if we love one another, 
That's how we prove we love God. Don't just say that you love God, but then you've got an issue with someone in your church or in, in your group or in your your life. That's That means that you're a liar, you're a hypocrite. If you love God, you love everybody. God loves the whole world, so you should love them the same. It's just the same truth. So I pray that you've had encouragement this morning. If you think to yourself, oh, I can't do this, you're wrong. God can lift you up. God will do anything. He's, he's able to do anything, seemingly much more than you could ever pray for. He can do that. And he can do it to the humble hearted, to the lowly. Think about the Beatitudes. I could go on all day. In the Beatitudes, he blessed the meek, the lowly, the mourning. They're not talking about people that mourn like death. They're talking about people that mourn their own sin, that come low, that think their self of no, no level, no, no higher than a common man. Put yourself on the bottom of the ladder and God will lift you to the top. Have a good day in Jesus. I love you all and pray that you're going further with Christ. In Jesus' name, amen.